going on everybody cowboy chuck long time founder backer for squad uh, like i said we are doing our continuing series on squad basics how to help you as a new player in the game be more effective sooner and you know basically get you up to speed on how you can help your team out your squad out <clears throat> sooner rather than later all right so to continue this series we're going to hop in the training range again we're going to choose one of the factions. It doesn't matter which, because for what we're talking about today, we are going to talk about a couple couple different things. We'll talk about three things. Um, we're going to talk about specialist kits or roles, specifically the hat or the heavy anti-tank slash tandem uh, rocket propelled grenade RPG, as people call it. But we're going to look at the specialist role, the actual um, the one that's a little bit more difficult for some people, uh, specifically the Russian hat. Most of the other hat kits are easier to use. <clears throat> All right, and then we will look at a quick summary of vehicle damage models relative to the hat kits and lat kits, and then we'll look at emplacements with a quick overview of the different ones of, of their function and their usage. But more importantly, we'll end with mortars now <clears throat> i do have to say i misspoke in the last video saying that we were going to be looking at vehicle damage with taking some of the vehicles out and being able to destroy them unfortunately that's not the case um, in the training i can however take a vehicle out of main base on a regular map switch over to a hat kit and show you what sort of damage we can do to a vehicle <clears throat> if we do it inside a, a inside of an actual map um, but it's it's still hit or miss when you're doing it in a training setting um, because it is the local implementation of squad it's not a real game so Damage models may not be the same, and it may not even blow up. So to avoid that, you know, big snafu or fiasco, we're just going to focus on concepts and how to use the role <clears throat> and talk about positioning and how close or how far you should be. Um, so with that said, we'll spawn in. It doesn't matter which faction. The U.S. and uh, the U.S. version is the easiest hat kit to use, so we'll start there. But first, before we do that, we'll choose... We'll choose the hat kit. We will spawn up in the northeast corner of the training, and we will talk through really quickly the uh, the damage models. Okay? All right. First thing you do, keep in mind where we're at. Northeast corner. <clears throat> we're in the northeast corner of the map here. Okay? U.S. faction. British faction. Russian faction, militia, insurgent. Okay. <clears throat> What's important here is understanding you need to learn vehicles by what they look like as well as how they sound. Um, understanding when you're, you know, one block away on Fallujah and you hear a vehicle sound and you check your map, you know, you hear rolling tires, but you check your map and you don't see a map V. If you're on Fallujah, then that means you're fighting one of two factions as a blue four faction. You're fighting either MEA or Insurgent. That's typically what you're going to be fighting as blue four. So if you can look at your map and you can hear a vehicle one block over or two blocks over and you don't see one of your friendly vehicles on your map when you pull it up, you need to know by sound what that vehicle is because then you can be more helpful to your squad and your team by saying, hey, squad leader, I've got an, uh, a smear technical, which is, you know, the MEA's little Jeep variant. Um, or I've got a insurgent technical uh, on the other side of the uh, on the other side of the street from me north of um, north of me next block over heading west to east You know, you need to give that information and the only way you can do that is by knowing how each of these vehicles sounds All right Most importantly damage models pay attention to the bottom two Orange and red specifically red you need to know where the weak point is on every vehicle. Okay <clears throat> on almost 
all armored vehicles, with some minor exceptions, the rear of the vehicle is the weakest spot. You can see on all of these heavier pieces of armor, the red areas are the weakest spots. Okay, Yellow is still fine as well, um, but it's going to take more hits. That's the key, is just to understand this model, know what the difference is between these different pieces of armor so that when you spawn in at the start of a round you can go right here to this top right corner of this wheel you see right here these icons mouse over this and go over to the vehicles when you get to the vehicles click it it'll pin it for a short period of time and it'll tell you okay you're the allied vehicles here's the enemy vehicle so you need to know what a BRDM sounds like, a Tiger sounds like, MTLB, BTR, BMP, T72, Spandrel, or BRDM, the MI8, and then the logistics transport truck. So already in your head, you should be thinking, okay, this is what this is going to sound like. So come over here, pay attention to the damage models. Then, like I said, go check out some of the vehicles. So we'll go down here. And you need to be able to understand what something sounds like. So when I hop in this and I start it up, listen to that engine. It idles that part right there, run, 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 like that. That is unique to the Russian Lodgy. So that is the only Lodgy that makes that sound. Turn it off, go over to the Tiger. The Tiger is super silent. So understanding these vehicles and understanding what it sounds like, it doesn't have a lot of noise. You hear how it's much quieter than the Lodgy, but what you can hear on this is the tires rolling. <clears throat> so you need to know what that sounds like and pay no attention to the training range stuff now let's go over here to the u.s lodges and transports and listen to the difference the russian one almost sounded like it had a knock in the engine hear the difference It's quieter, it's more of a muted sound, and it's a steady sound. There's no revving of it unless you go to drive it, okay? <clears throat> Same thing for the Mat V. We'll jump in the Mat V, and then the BRDM. Mat V, very unique. Hear that sound? So just come over here, jump in the vehicles. If it tells you you have to get a crewman kit to enter the vehicle, that's fine. Just jump into the crew, jump in, um, and switch over to a crewman kit. And the way you switch over to a crewman kit on a vehicle, you just walk up to it, press F, and before you enter the vehicle, you can switch over. Oh, excuse me. You can go right here and switch over to a crewman kit. That's all you got to do. But it, it's more important. In the training range, you don't have to have it. Okay? But, listen to that vehicle. It's got a very unique sound to it. Nothing else in the game sounds like it. <clears throat> Canadian labs and strikers sound exactly the same because they're basically the same vehicle. Okay? Start a BTR up different sound hear it so the point being learn your vehicles learn your vehicle sounds learn the vehicle damage models all right let's go up and do hat kit ranging really quick <clears throat> Okay, hat kit ranging on the U.S., super simple. Pull out your tandem. It's going to give you grid lines. The, the tandem or uh, the tandem one is the grid lines are going to be wider apart. See how wide they are? 
where the one, two, three, four, and five, so the 100, 200, 300, 400, 500 is easy to read. So it's a large aiming reticle with grid lines for you and gradients. The pluses are the solid are, are the evens, so the hundreds, two hundreds, or they're the hundreds markers. The dash is the fifties. So 150, 250, so on and so forth. There's the 100 meter marker. Hold shift. We'll put the plus sign right on the turret. Fire. Boom. Done. Press three one more time. You'll switch over to the regular heat. You'll notice on the US one when you do the ranging this time and you ADS, the reticle, the, the gradients are going to be tighter because it flies straighter. Same principle though. You put the one plus sign right on the turret, which is right there. Fire. Boom. And it's done. That's it. Find a vehicle or a rifleman or an ammo crate. Rearm. All right. Russian. We'll switch teams. Our character will die. We lose our role, but we'll spawn in as a Russian. All right. Created. And the one I'm going to speak to most speak more to is the 7v2 which is the which is the harder one to fire the 28 rpg 28 is a good one to use up close um this one is a little takes a little bit more practice so we're going to choose that one and we'll spawn in right here <laughs> there we go And what we're going to do is walk through the aiming reticles slash grid lines <clears throat> on the RPG 7v2. Okay, so we're going to pull it out. This big monstrosity here. Alright. If you look, this seems a little confusing at first, but once you understand which one applies to which, then it'll be easier for you. Okay, number one. As a hat kit, from a positioning standpoint, if I'm any closer than 100 meters to a vehicle, I run the risk of being detected and shot at by the vehicle itself and any troops that are in and around it. Okay, so number one, from a positioning standpoint, is make sure you have people to support you, specifically riflemen to rearm you if you're not sitting next to a vehicle or an ammo crate. Um, but if you are sitting next to a vehicle that you're friendly, that you're using as a supply point, you want to position yourself away from that vehicle so you don't put your, yourself as well as your assets and other teammates into harm's way. Okay, so <clears throat> that's number one. Number two, know your weak spots like we talked about back on that, on that range up in the top right hand corner. Know your, know your damage model. So understanding that, you know that me firing this shot from the side is not going to be the best use of this tandem round. However, if it's already a damaged vehicle, this tandem round could potentially destroy it. So from a ranging perspective, the tandem is the heaviest rocket that you use. So it's going to fall to the bottom of the scale. That's the easiest way I can explain it to you. As a heavy anti-tank, you're going to have a standard heat round or high explosive anti-tank and you're going to have the tandem round the tandem round because it's a heavier round will use the bottom ranging so you can see what looks like a telephone pole for lack of a better term or a power line transmission line um, down at the bottom there you see that one 1 1.5 and the two on the vertical axis okay that one is 100 meters you want to put the horizontal line where one is right on the top of the target. Fire. Boom. Press three. It'll load the standard heat round. <clears throat> the standard heat round, the lighter of the two rounds, uses the top portion. Now, you'll notice you've got two, three, four, five listed there on what looks like the little honeycomb grid at the top. Okay, the M for meters, where that little small plus sign, that's your 100 meter mark. So you put the plus right on the turret, hold shift to hold your breath, and fire. 
boom that's it that's your ranging simple as can be okay so the same thing you go here reload all we'll switch over to the tandem you got to press r to reload and make sure you complete the animation make sure you shoulder the weapon and you can ads it if you shouldered the weapon and ads it after pressing reload it should stay loaded unless you switch weapons or switch to the other uh anti-tank or rpg round all right so that one's at 400 that one is not a realistic target and here's why when you look at the aiming reticle, you see 1, 1 1.5, and 2. See down at the very bottom of the reticle where it gets a little fuzzy? That gradient, that's right at <clears throat> 300 to 325 meters. Okay? So for anything over 300 meters, it's a crapshoot whether you're going to hit it or not. So that one at 300, if we want to hit that one, we basically have to put the gradient right about there and fire. And we might hit it, we might not. See that hit just behind it because you have no visual reference. But the, if I remember correctly, that bottom gradient where it starts to get gray and black on the bottom of the reticle is right at 325. So, but for this one, the high explosive anti-tank one, the standard round, 300 meters is a straight shot. Because all we've got to do is take the 300 line and put it right there on the target, right there. Boom. Okay? So, anyway, take your time. That's the easiest way to learn the Russian hat kit. It's just understanding that the tandem round as a hat kit is the heaviest round. So you're going to use the bottom part of the aiming or the bottom part of the gradient here. The 1, 1 1.5, and the 2. Okay, all right. Now let's talk about emplacements. Actually, let me switch to a squad leader kit. <laughs> all right, emplacements. Let's go down here at the end. Urge. All right. <clears throat> For the Russians, you have the cornet launcher. Same exact thing as the tow for the U.S. and the British and the Canadians. All right. So as the MEA and the Russians, you get this version of basically a tandem round that's on a wire, an optically guided uh, missile, for lack of a better term. You press F to enter the emplacement. So it's the emplacements are treated like vehicles. You have to press F to enter. The one difference is you press F and you're instantly placed inside the emplacement. So whether it's a mounted machine gun, the Zeus anti-aircraft, which we'll get to in just a second, a mortar, or a tow launcher, they all do, are treated the same. You press F, just press it one time. Whereas a vehicle, you have to press and hold F to enter and exit. Okay, so I'm in the mortar, or I'm, excuse me, I'm in the tow slash cornet launcher. <clears throat> And you can see I'm moving it side to side, but I can't see anything. Right click, and now you're put into the view of looking down the reticle. Okay. The one huge advantage, the Russian slash MEA version of the tow slash cornet is what it's called. The, the huge advantage it has is it has three magnifications. So you have none, and Q is what you use to rain, uh, magnify. Q there's that's position q1 q2 and then q3 so you have three magnifications none some and a lot okay advantageous because it gives you an intermediate disadvantageous is if you're in the wrong setting and you want to go back to the other one one of the other ones you got to click through multiple times where the u.s only has two settings either ranging the uh, magnification is on or off one of the two all right Anytime you exit or un-ADS like that, it automatically resets to no magnification, okay? Two key points about cornets and tow launchers, specifically cornets. When those projectiles launch, they don't just launch straight. 
they come out of the tube, they settle, and then they start to climb up to an altitude, okay? Why that's important is this. If I'm firing from this ranging view, as in unmagnified, <clears throat> if I make a small change like this, that has a huge impact to the missile over distance. But if I'm ranged like this, and I move up or down like this, you can see it still stays pretty close to being on target, all right? So we'll show you what that means. I'm gonna fire by clicking my left mouse button one time. Watch the rocket when it comes out. It'll come out, the corner will come out, it'll drop, and then it'll start to rise again. See how it drops, and then it comes back up, and it's, it kind of spirals, right? So if you have this aimed too low, it's just going to go straight into the ground. So you always want to make sure you have it at least on the midline of the target, okay? While you're ads hit R to reload it, okay? And I forgot one other huge advantage. And let me exit the, the cornet so you can see the advantage. <clears throat> You'll notice that the Cornet launcher, what's different between these two launchers as far as what's in front of the different uh, projectiles? You'll notice <clears throat> that the Cornet launcher, you can put a sandbag wall in front of it and it won't block it. The US toe, even if you put a sandbag in front of it, you're exposed because you see this optic right here on the top right here this optic you're looking through that optic parallel with the missile right here beside your head the cornet launcher you're actually looking through here right there it's literally a periscope so you can see right here the player model is going to be behind sandbag wall so you have to place these sandbags in front or hesco blocks or something like that to protect it but with the u.s variant or the canadian or british variant when you put sandbags right here it doesn't do any good because you're going to be you can see see where the sandbag wall stops it stops only mid torso so you're still hunched over this reticle right here aiming down range okay so that's important to note U.S. version, <clears throat> same thing, takes a little bit of time to load, locks it in place, okay, same thing, right click, and you can see no magnification, some magnification, none, some, none, some. So with this one, it's easy to get back to zero magnification. You can do it this way by pressing Q over and over and over again, or... If you right click and right click again, I like to unright, uh, un ADS, look around, nothing like that. Because if you sit here and look through this the whole time, right, it, you can see down range, but you can't see what's above you. And keep in mind the angle of the toes and the cornets, they don't have perpetual ranging you can't you can't or excuse me perpetual tilt or azimuth you can't aim it straight up you've only got about a 30 degree 30 to 40 degree window in which to use it to look up and down so the more at range a target is the easier it is for you to see <clears throat> same concept though press q to zoom we'll go out to we'll do 1500 and i'll show you I'm shooting out here. Oh, let me dial it back in. Let me get back on target. Boom. Okay. However, <clears throat> if I'm up close within, you know, basically like four, 300 to 400 meters, I literally have to be aimed on that target because if I'm aimed slightly off, let's just say, you know, <clears throat> I fire. Hachoo! And be like, oh crap, 
now I got to do like that to try and get it back quickly in that short range, right? I sneeze or I cough or, or my, my hand slips on the mouse and it pushes it up like that. I've got very little wiggle room, so to speak, because of a time perspective on a short target to correct that fire. If I screw it up, <clears throat> like I'm shooting at a target ranged in and he's only 300 meters away and I miss, by the time I go to reload, so I press R to reload, that up close target has an opportunity, one, to return fire, two, to evade. So it's typically better, especially like if you're chasing after helicopters and they're literally right here in front of you, unless they're headed away from you or stationary, I typically avoid targets that are up close and personal because the margin of error is so small, okay? <clears throat> You can see right here, you know, if I, let's just say I, I fire and I go, I chew and I go, like, oh crap, now I can get back on target. You know, I have time to get it back on target the longer range it is. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Zeus, same thing. This is like a vehicle, so you have to hold F to enter it. Okay. The first time you enter the Zeus, the ZSU-33 anti-aircraft, whether it's an emplacement or a vehicle. So there's two vehicles in-game that have, uh, or excuse me, three. I think it's three vehicles. You have a Ural truck that has this on the back of it. You have an MTLB variant of this. And you also have a technical variant of this particular um, emplacement. Okay. If it's an emplacement that you put down from an FOB, it costs construction points. <clears throat> if it's a vehicle that has it, uh, if I recall correctly, it does not require a crewman kit to be in the gunner seat. Okay. So that's something to remember. <clears throat> All right. Same principle. It's got anti-aircraft munitions so it's fragmentation it's designed for helicopters realistically but it will take out a vehicle um, it'll take out a logic truck um, it'll take out a transport truck um, it'll take out mat v's and tat v's for things like a striker and um like a uh a um a lav or some or a tank or anything like that this is not the best option number one it doesn't have a true zoom you have to hold the shift key to bring the field closer but it doesn't actually zoom anything right it just it's it's like almost like a 1 to 1.5 zoom it doesn't give you anything for things that are at range so anything over like 200 meters you know like you look at 300 meters it's not going to bring it bring it that much into the foray or the front but don't just sit there and hold it down. It's loud as all get out. Do you see what happened there? Do you know what that was? I'll show you what it was. What it was, was I fired on myself. And that's important to understand. The reason I did that was to show you something. The Zeus itself you have to pay attention to where you're firing and I can show you exactly what happened. <clears throat> look at, uh, look at where it was aimed, right? Okay. It was aimed right here. What it did is it hit these sandbags and it caused backblast on me. Okay. So keep in mind when you're in a vehicle, when you're in a vehicle shooting the ZSU, specifically the Ural truck and the technicals. If you fire towards the front of the vehicle, you actually can kill the driver. So it's better if you're going to use this particular device or this weapon to have the vehicle backed in or turns at least sideways so that you're, you're panning this way and not running the risk of hitting something right here beside you. So that's just a piece of advice. Um, I'm just going to fire to show you how long it takes to reload. All right, so it's empty, right? 
to reload this thing. Hang on. What's this thing doing? Oh, it's already out of ammunition. That's right. I already used it. To reload this thing, it's got two canisters. One, two. When it reloads this, it reloads both canisters, and it can take up to 10 seconds to reload. So that's why you don't want to just sit there and hold down on the left mouse key or less, a left mouse button and just fire nonstop. It doesn't make a lot of sense. All right. The mounted machine guns, the, H, the heavy machine guns for emplacements, <coughs> there's two types. <coughs> there's the standalone version, which is what you see here, okay, which is no protection at all. They each have uh, ranging marks on them, just like the hat kits do, okay. This is just the bipodded version. These are 200 build points. Here's the Russian version, same thing. Um, the Russian and US versions also have an emplacement, which is an HMG bunker. That's 400 build points. Um, if you're trying to defend a position, you can use both. Keep in mind that you are limited to a certain number of them per fob. All right, this is the SPG-9 recoilless rifle. It has Fragmentation rounds for person, uh, pers anti-personnel basically, and it has high explosives. Ranging on this is just like the U.S. hat kit. It's almost the same reticle, it's just got more. You can see it's got 1,200 plus meters. You can shoot this thing out to 2,000 meters if you just you know eyeball it and range it accordingly, but it's 200, 400, 600, 800 using the chevrons slash carrots. The top plus sign is 100 meters. The vertical dashes are your 50 meter marks. So if I wanted to hit 750, that's 800 right there, the, the big carrot. So I'll put it just under that right about there. Hold shift, fire, boom, right on it. Super easy. Um, let's see. Let's switch over to fragmentation. You can see it's zeroed at 100 meters. Look in the bottom right-hand corner there. It shows 100 meters. So for 100 meters, put the plus sign right there. Boom. Simple as that. You press R to reload. All right. Now for the fun. Mortars. <clears throat> it's important to understand with mortars a couple of principles. Number one, mortars are not precise. So... When somebody gives you a mark on that you're using as a reference point for you to shoot to <clears throat> and range to, keep in, sign, keep, in, keep in mind two principles. Number one, mortars are not precise, and here's why. When you fire mortars, they're fired in salvos of three. So every time you reload the mortar, it takes three rounds, all right? <clears throat> When you fire them, they land within a 50 meter radius of one another and they land in a triangle pattern. So, you know, for lack of a better term, I'll just show it to you with a napkin. They're going to land in a triangle pattern. Okay. Now, the closer you are, the tighter that triangle is. The farther away you are, excuse me, the closer you are, the wider that triangle. The farther away you are, the closer that triangle is, okay? And what I mean by that is the margin of error at range is less for the range you select. If you're off left or right by one degree on your compass, however, you have a greater margin of error and I'll show it to you all right so the key thing to understand is there's two readings you need you need compass direction and you need range so first things first we will be as a squad leader we will range to we'll just do 400 meters just so you can see all right so as a squad leader all right, I want you to hit, uh, they're on move, they're on move. 
I need you to fire fire three rounds. All right. <clears throat> oh, excuse me. I put it at 300. You can see on the left hand side of the grid is your ranging. 300 meters. It's 1475. To get to 1475, number one. Hang on. Let's do this again. It's just like any other emplacement. F one time to enter. Right click to bring up the UI and we said we wanted 300 meters. You can see where our aiming point is down at the bottom. So you align the vertical crosshair <clears throat> with 300. You look over and it says 1475. So get to 1475 first. <clears throat> 1475, we want to range to 300. And because we're so close, I'm going to use 1475 as my range. One, two, three, F to exit. I'm going to go into admin cam really quick so you can see where 300 meters hits. It's 20 seconds to splash on mortars. <clears throat> These should be pretty close to being spot on 300. Here they come. Watch where they land. One, two, three. So you notice two were right on the mark and one was a little short, but it was kind of a for lack of a better term, it was, um, let me see if I can do this correctly there. It was a small, ob like an obtuse triangle. It had two narrows and one far. Now, why is that important to understand? I ranged to 400, correct? But look where they hit. Two of them hit, sh or I ranged to 300, sorry. Ranged to 300. The first two hit right at about 290. The third one hit at about 285. Okay, the reason that's important to understand is because when you are firing mortars, the Millerad reading that squad provides you is not 100% accurate. What I've found to be the most useful, useful tip ranging mortars, right? Let's go back to that 300 meter mark. We're going to range to 300 again, right? <clears throat> okay. We're gonna go back into our, okay, it's still sitting at 1475, but we saw that we came a little short or we fell a little short. You can see that 350 is 1453 on our readings. If we wanted 325, we would go halfway. You can see that we fell about 10 meters short, right? So the difference between the, the 300 meter to 350 meters is very simple. It's 22, okay? If you divide that by five, you get four, right? And the reason I say divide it by five is very simple. 400 meters, 410 meters, 420 meters. So you got 50, 50 meter increments. Divide it by five, okay? We know our first reading for 300 was 1475. We need to go 10 meters further. So we need 310 meters. So in order to go 310 meters, we probably should be at 14, uh, 1470. Let's try 1470 and see how it adjusts. The key is you need to have someone that has eyes down range. So let's do 1470, one, two, Three, and let's see what happens. <laughs> These should be closer. These should hit right around here. See that? One, two, three. Okay, see where the third one landed? The third one landed closer. The first two still landed in approximately the same range. The third one land closer, landed closer. Last time, the first two hit close here, but the third one hit all the way back here. So that third ranging shot was closer. Okay, so now you got, okay, you can tell the person tell you, okay, you're still 10 meters short. And what this is getting to is, is something that I teach people with mortars. You don't need a mortar calculator, okay? And here's why. What I would normally do is this. We know we need three, 300 meters, right? 
<clears throat> 300 meters is our mark. 1475 was the or, or that was the original 300 meters. Sorry, 1475 was the original range. Halfway between 300 to 350 is 325 meters. Halfway between 1475 and 1453 is 1464. Take it to 1464 and fire three rounds. All right. I'm going to just put my crosshair right there on 300. We'll do 1464 and we'll just do one, two, three. And let's see how close we come to the 300 meter mark this time. It should be just beyond it. I could have done uh, 320. It's probably, two of them are probably going to land far and one is going to land right in the general area. We should be right in this area. There's one. Two and the third one, boom, the third one was dead on target. <clears throat> so that's how you can range effectively in mortars. Whatever the person tells you the range is, go halfway between the next range. So if it tells you it's 300 meters, take the Millerad reading from 300 meters and the Millerad readings from 350 meters, divide it by two and just add that number to the original Millerad, okay? So from a pr in practice, we'll do it really fast. Do it again one more time just to cement and firm up our understanding. All right, <clears throat> so like I said, should already be arranged there. If you look at the reading on the left-hand side, 1475 is 300. 350 is 1453. That difference is 22 millirads. Split it in half. It's 11. Either subtract 11 from 1475 or add 11 to 1453. That's how I got to my number of 1464. And you could see that 1464 was basically dead on. Now, let's take it out a little further though. Let's go see. Let's do 1250. <clears throat> All right, we want 12, or it's 1200 meters. So 1200 meters, you'll see it says 918, but then for 1250, you see it's 800. There's a bigger disparity. And the reason that is, is because you're at a longer range. So the closer you are, the less movement within the millirads you need. With the longer ones, it's less accurate. <clears throat> so you can see it says 918 for 1200 and 800 for 1250. That's a difference of 82. Split the difference, it's 41. So we need 841. I'm sorry, hang on, I'm wrong. That's 118, my bad. So it's 59. So we need 859 on our uh, ranging. <clears throat> We gotta go all the way down. You can see it's lowering it. That's really cool to be, you know, accurate. So we need 859 and we need 1200 meters. All right. Ready? One, two, three. F, shift P. Should hit right as we get out here. <clears throat> There's the first one. See that? So that ranging is 1250, I believe. Yeah, I range to 1200. I hit dead on 1200, literally on the money. Okay? <clears throat> the point is, in order to do mortars effectively and on the fly, you've got to have a couple pieces of information. You've got to have direction. You've got to have range, and you also have to understand relative to the target what that ranging is. So in other words, if it's an enemy hab that someone is trying to, you're trying to hit, or a radio, for instance. If you're trying to hit a radio and take it out of commission, you need that mark to be dead on. Whereas with the hab, you know, you're placing a hab <clears throat> or it's a stationary vehicle, you don't have to be as precise. You can put the mark on one end of the hab or the other end of the hab, or you can put the mark on one end of the vehicle or the other end of the vehicle. That's fine. But if it's a radio, that's a finite point on the map. You have to be 
100% accurate on it, okay? So let's go to, let's do something a little closer just so I can get to it range-wise. We'll do this one right here. <clears throat> 750, all right. Hop in, same thing, F to enter. It'll load automatically. Right click, we want 750, so we want 1267. Use your mouse to just push your mouse up. All right, so we want 1267 for 750, but like I said, we want to split the difference between 750 and 800. That difference in this instance is 27 millirads or approximately 13. So we will go 1253. Right? Yeah, 1253. So we'll go 1253. Put it, oh, oops, I was a little off to the side there. Hang on. That first one's going to be way off. And that's actually good. I want you to see that. <clears throat> I was one degree off. One degree off on the ranging. Now watch how far left that one goes. That was the first one. Second one third one I was one degree off of my ranging because did I put my mark correctly no I didn't okay that's why I put my mark in correctly <clears throat> what I want to show you is at range so 750 meters is pretty close right that's not that far but <clears throat> Let's show you that same 1250 mark that we had before. Urge, go back here, too fast. Let's go back to that same 1250 mark that we had before, okay? I want to show you what happens if you get your mark off, okay? So, we're going to do, we'll do a thousand. <clears throat> no, actually, yeah, yeah, we'll do a thousand. We'll do 1250. Let's range in on this and we'll do this correctly. So, we want. We want to do that. 1250 is 800. You know what? Let's not do 1250. Let's range it short. <clears throat> Let's do here. 1150. There we go. 1150 is 988. <clears throat> 988. All right. If I range to 988, and then I do the difference of 70, split in half is 35. So 35 from 988 is 953. We'll do 953, but I want you to see something if I take the mortars and I have them off. So let's do, let's just do two degrees. So we'll do 177, the first shot, 179, the second shot, and 181 third shot. I want you to see the disparity if you're just two degrees off at a long distance. I want you to see how much difference there is in ranging. <clears throat> Alright, so there's the first one. That was two degrees. Second one. Third one. Okay. See what two degrees of difference does at range. Okay. All right, I'm on top of where I range to. The first one hit here, second one hit here, third one hit here. Look at that difference, that disparity. That's 100 meters by just switching two degrees and being inaccurate. with. So if someone put a move mark incorrectly or put a vehicle marker or a hab marker or a radio marker incorrectly or even troops, if they put that marker incorrectly and you're ranging and you're dialing in your mortars based upon the accuracy of that mark, you can see just having just one, two degrees of variation. If somebody marks it and they're trying to do it through binoculars <clears throat> and they range like, oh, I've got direct eyes on the hab and they put the observe marker directly on it and you fire to that mark, you have your squad leader, you know, dagger it or put a move marker there, you can see just by having a two degree variation, you could literally be 100 meters off target. And so that's why it's important as a new player to understand ranging in mortars 
and you need to have eyes on. So if you got a commander in UAV that's guiding you in, that helps because it's real time. If you have somebody boots on the ground, so to speak, that helps. Um, but again, spend time on the range. And, you know, if somebody says they're going to create a mortar squad, let them. Because the squad leader typically knows, you know, in general should know what they're doing and they can help you get the mortars dialed in correctly. All right. So hopefully that was helpful to you. Um, so to date, first video we did, configuration setup of squad to help you have the best performance in game. Second video we did, we talked about infantry basics, changing your kits, understanding weapon sounds, recoil variables, maneuvering in and around objects, vaulting, using cover. Um, we did the we did understanding slicing the pie. We did the kill house. <clears throat> this time we talked briefly about hat kit specialist roles, ranging the hat kit, specifically the Russian one because that's the most difficult one. <clears throat> especially the, the specifically the 7v2 version. Um, we talked about emplacements and understanding you know the challenges of using certain emplacements like the cornet and the U.S. slash British slash Canadian toe, and then we also talked about mortars. <clears throat> Next time we're going to focus on probably one of the most critical pieces of you as a new player getting up to speed, and that is map knowledge. How can you get better at a game that you've never played before if you don't know the maps? And I'll teach you a couple tricks and tips to help you learn maps and get an idea of, say, for instance, you were playing in a round and you couldn't understand where you were getting shot from or how in the world did the enemy get over there. I'm going to help you understand some of those principles. And when we do that, <clears throat> we'll talk about how understanding maps and specifically certain assets on a map once you've experienced that asset or that building in game, you'll be able to recognize it in the future playing on other maps and you'll know coming up to that particular asset or that map building, you already know the internal layout of the building and it gives you a better frame of mind and reference for how to attack it more effectively and understanding where the choke points are and understanding where the enemies most likely are hidden. So hopefully you found this useful. I will be back again streaming Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday on Twitch. The name is Cowboy underscore Chuck. I stream uh, usually around 9.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Usually go until about 1.30, 2.30 in the morning. And then I put out content like this in the forms of highlights. Um, full highlights of rounds as a specific class so you get a feel for the flow of an entire match. Um, and then sometimes just some fun little snips here and there and then and then obviously this one right here talking about understanding the basics of the game to try and help you get better so again look forward to seeing you on stream catch you next time hopefully you enjoyed this have a great day see you